If you're the attorney for Diddy, obviously image is massively important to your client. I mean, Diddy, that's what he lives on these days. Um, you know, and and kind of this aura of of who he is or who he was, and he's this kingmaker and all of that. So there's already a tremendous amount of damage that has been done now with, with this information being out there, everybody speculating. And I haven't heard many arguments to the uh, point that, well, maybe Diddy's innocent. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been pretty much all like he's kind of screwed. Um, with that being said, how do you advise your client to move forward on this to protect that image? I mean, the best you can is really the best thing you can do is saying, this is all ridiculous. There's nothing to it because that's basically what they've been saying. Yeah, you know what? One one report I heard from one of his attorneys is that they have overwhelming, indisputable proof that disproves the allegations against Diddy. Um, I certainly wouldn't lead with such a strong promise to the American public uh, because, uh, one, the defense doesn't have to put on any proof. They don't have to do anything. And, and two, uh, that's such a huge bar to meet to di saying you have indisputable proof of every allegation. So I thought that was um, maybe a misstep by his attorney. I'd advise the client to, of course, lay low and, and rather to, um, you know, to, to maintain his dignity if he can, but, but um, be more on the humble side, you know, uh, you don't want to make specific promises to the public and, and you don't want to come out as this bombastic uh, jerk, uh, especially in the face of all of these multiple inflammatory allegations. I think laying low, seeing how things play out and begin doing investigation kind of on the down low from the defense side would be the move at this point. What kind of weight do the civil suits that have been settled hold over him going forward? Let's assume there's going to be charges brought at some point in time. Um, are, are, are all of those, those things untouchable? They've been settled in a civil case. There's NDAs, there's all that. Or is it a situation where the NDAs are worth nothing more than the paper that they're written on? You know, usually the civil suits will provide a body of evidence from which the uh, criminal investigators can draw in terms of building their case. Um, even if there are confidentiality issues and, and NDA issues, there are often criminal subpoenas, at least in Colorado, that can sometimes overcome those things. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the NDA is like a contract. That's like a civil contract between two people saying, I'm not going to disclose whatever. Uh, but the but the federal government can say, no, no, we've got a search warrant here and and we're coming in anyway. Um, so it, it lists evidence. It lists witnesses in the civil side that I'm sure are going to be utilized in, in Diddy's criminal investigation. So basically, the civil suit is kind of, OK, we settled this as long as this never turns into a criminal case. It's like the only way this is going to crack this thing open is if it goes to that level. If he, if none of this happened, if none of the criminal investigation began those would still be valid. And, and they probably are still valid to a certain extent until the feds come knocking and saying, oh, we got to talk about these. Sure. And and so, um, you know, in the civil side, there are confidentiality provisions, there are non-disclosure agreements, but those don't necessarily cover each and every single item of information within the civil suit. And there are still ways to kind of penetrate that, um, that, that, that don't necessarily run afoul of those NDAs. For example, an NDA might, might say that um, Cassie, for example, can't talk about uh, the allegations, um, but 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 there's information and in complaints and in, in legal documents that the federal government might try to obtain um, so that they can um, learn information from that without ever talking to Cassie. So there are kind of workarounds that I imagine the federal government is, is exploring right now. Sure, sure. How many different types of charges do you think we're going to see here and how many different trials are we going to see? Are they going to roll all of these charges into one thing? Uh, at some point, because we're talking weapons, we're talking sex trafficking, we're talking drugs, we're talking a lot. And I mean, a lot, some of them may be a lot easier to prove than others. I mean, for example, weapons. Here's what we found on your property. These are not, and we don't know what they found. I mean, we I, so I can't say for sure that these were unregistered firearms or anything like that. Judging from some of the information we've heard in some of the civil complaints, not going to be surprised if they are, uh, or a portion of them are. The drugs, pretty straightforward there. I mean, those that in itself are going to hold their own amount of penalties and charges. Uh, is this going to be something where there's a weapons trial for Diddy? There's a drug trial. Uh, there's a sex trafficking. Or does this all get rolled into one big thing because there's so much of it that are all kind of connected together? 
you know, the prosecutor authority, the prosecutorial authorities are going to have to strategize about that because you can you can play it multiple ways. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at sort of uh, uh, President Trump's legal issues, and a lot of them have overlap. A lot of them are related, mm -hmm. but they still sort of charge them in a piecemeal way, um, such that there are multiple cases that span uh, across the nation, and some are more provable than others. And so, um, kind of like you alluded to, Tony, I, I, I'm guessing that they're going to take sort of the strongest. Um, uh, center of evidence for, for one piece of it and, and go forward in a particular locale. You know, we, we know that there are raids in multiple states. And so um, usually, especially if they're going to bring state court charges, those charges are going to have to be within that state jurisdiction. Something that happened in California oftentimes cannot be prosecuted in Florida. And so um, I'm guessing they're going to break it up and have some stronger cases and some weaker cases. And then, um, then the real show begins. Basically, get him on some things and get him in custody. And then as the sex trafficking continues, not that the sex trafficking is continuing, but the investigation of the sex trafficking continues, that'll give them more time to investigate that more thoroughly. But at least we got him on something right now is essentially what you're saying. And yeah, exactly. And with such a broad um, span of allegations, both temporally, locationally, uh, and in terms of subject matter, uh, I, I think that that's what they're going to do is is identify what do we really have them on. Let's let's um, pull the trigger on that, and then, like you said, continue investigating the breadth of the, of these massive allegations um, across the nation. Continue building those cases. Um, but I'm but I'm guessing. Yes, and that raid turned up uh, some gems for the government. They're gonna they're gonna leverage those mm -hmm. um, as they proceed in these investigations. Sure, I mean, there's a lot of people out there as well that have had connections with him. Uh, I'm sure many of them being contacted by the feds as you know, being subpoenaed, asking to be confidential informants, things of that nature. Uh, and I'm guessing also on the Diddy side, they're probably thinking, who do we need to talk to? Who do we need to? Is there anything that the Diddy camp can do or may attempt to do right now uh, for those people? I'm talking, you know, your Justin Bieber's of the world, things of that nature, where it looks a little questionable. Um, there's been many people. Mace has made comments about it kind of, you know, it's coming to roost for you. Mary J has made comments. There's been a lot of people who've had very high opinions of him over the past, you know, 20 some years that now are like, yeah, um, can can they? In, I mean, Number one, is it even legal to, to say anything like, you know, please, uh, please, you know, be, keep it this way. Only say this much. But that would be they'd be in violation then of, of something, I would imagine, if the government is saying you got to talk and you got to be honest. Yeah, you know, if, if I were Diddy, I would be sort of identifying who my true friends were. And and, and on, the, on the legal side, I would identify witnesses um, who may be supportive of his defense. I, I suspect his defense is going to be something along the lines of um, these horrible things didn't happen, but the ones that did happen were consensual. Mm -hmm. uh, I, be I bet that's the direction he's going to go. Um, so on the legal side, you're identifying witnesses who can support that. But on the PR side, on the optics side, he he's, he's got so much at stake business-wise that he has to try to um, sort of shift the social narrative away from what you said, which is, you know, everybody kind of thinking, God, did he a screw it? Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, you can argue the consensual thing if someone is of age, the big problem is going to be proving underage uh, in this uh, in identifying individuals because there ain't no consent there. Um, how much do you think drugs played a role in Diddy's mindset over this stuff over the last however many years? We're hearing the allegations of having somebody on staff that basically has a little fanny pack filled with drugs. And when Diddy wants something, Diddy gets something. And it's all just kind of this buffet of whatever the hell he wants. Um, Granted, you know, he has all this money, he has all this power. If he didn't do these things, he could continue to enjoy that for the rest of his life and, and just fade off into, you know, history. Um, drugs make you do crazy shit. Uh, and and I'm wondering, because you look at the behavior, you go, how could you just throw this all away? How could? But it's a pattern of behavior. I'm wondering how much drugs play a role in his thinking and his way of conducting himself if if the allegations are true to the level at which he was using them. Yeah, you know, in my experience, pros both prosecuting and defending drug crimes, um, they, uh, you know, as many you know, they often lead to a distorted mindset, sometimes an, an inflated sense of confidence, a, yeah. a sense that someone feels bulletproof. 
Um, and and um, I can't help but wonder, based on the reports I've read and the allegations of, of drugs being associated with all of these um, alleged events, that that, that that was probably present and, and probably had some influence on whoever was taking them. And if it was Diddy, then, then certainly it would influence him. Yeah, it's... Um... There's so many, so many tendrils to this thing and so many things that play influence. Not that drugs, uh, you know, are an excuse, but I always kind of look for what's the recipe that made this person the way they are, and I do wonder how much that was part of the ingredients. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.